Note that we are able to solve the system in the previous example using the inverse matrix method because the system is two by two, and we know how to find the inverse of a two by two matrix. We are yet to know how to find the inverse of an n by n matrix, and we will use the following example to illustrate. Suppose we want to find the inverse of the following matrix: a equals one three negative two, two five negative three, negative three two negative four. We will first form an augmented matrix, which consists of the columns of A and the columns of the identity matrix. Then we will proceed to perform row operations to reduce A to row echelon form. Observe that the top left entry of A is already one, so we proceed to make the entries below the leading one to zero. So we replace the second row by the second row minus two times the first row, and replace the third row. By the third row plus three times the first row, we obtain the following augmented matrix. Notice that the entries of the identity matrix are also changed. Next, the leading entry in the second row is negative one, so we multiply the second row by negative one to create a leading one. After that, we make the entry below the leading one to zero. That means that we replace the third row by the third row minus eleven times the second row. We obtain the following augmented matrix. Now A is in row echelon form, but we will continue to perform more row operations to change all the entries above the leading ones to zero, so that the left matrix becomes the identity matrix. So we continue by making the entry above the leading one in the second row to zero. We can do so by subtracting three times the second row from the first row. It remains to make the entries above the leading one in the third row to zero, and we can do so by subtracting the third row from the first row and adding the third row to the second row. We obtain this augmented matrix. Now we claim that the matrix on the right is the inverse of A, and we can check this by multiplying A by this matrix. And multiply this matrix by A, and check that both are equal to the identity matrix. If we multiply A by this matrix, the top left entry equals one times fourteen plus three times negative seventeen plus negative two times negative nineteen, which equals fourteen minus fifty-one plus thirty-eight, which equals one. Similarly, we obtain the rest of the entries in the matrix product. And indeed, we obtain the identity matrix. Hence, the inverse of A is the matrix fourteen, negative eight, negative one, negative seventeen, ten, one, negative nineteen, eleven, and one. What we have done here is that we have carried the augmented matrix A and I to I and A inverse by elementary row operations. Such a method to find the inverse of a matrix can be generalized to any invertible matrix, and this result is recorded in this theorem. Let A be an invertible matrix, then the augmented matrix A and I can be carried to the identity matrix and the inverse of A by a sequence of elementary row operations. This is called the matrix inversion algorithm. To prove this, we start from the definition of inverses. Which is the equation a times a inverse equals the identity matrix. We write a inverse as x1, x2 up to xn, and i equals e1, e2 up to en in terms of their columns. So the equation becomes a times the matrix x1, x2 up to xn equals the matrix e1, e2 up to en. Using a property of matrix multiplication. The left-hand side is the matrix with columns a times x1, a times x2, up to a times xn. This is an equality of two matrices, which means that the corresponding columns must be the same. In other words, a times xj equals ej for all j from one to n. So we have n systems of linear equations for xj, where a is the coefficient matrix for each system. Since a is invertible. Each system has a unique solution given by x j equals a inverse times e j. Now 
we reduce a to row echelon form, say r, by elementary row operations. Note that r has no free variables, since otherwise there would be infinitely many solutions. Since r has size n by n, every column of r has a leading one, and the last row has entries zero, except the last entry is one. By performing more elementary row operations, which involves subtracting multiples of rows with a leading one from the rows above them, or entries above the leading ones become zero, and the resultant matrix is the identity matrix. Since elementary row operations do not change the set of solutions, the resultant systems are the identity matrix times xj equals cj, where cj is some vector resulting from the row operations. This means that cj equals xj, in other words, the jth column of A inverse. This implies that the resultant augmented matrix is I and A inverse, which completes the proof. Let's end this video with an example to find the inverse of a matrix using the matrix inversion algorithm. Consider the matrix A, which equals 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 1. 1, 1, 0, 2. We first form the augmented matrix A and I as follows. Then we reduce A to row echelon form. Since the top left entry of A is 1, and the entry below it is 0, the first step is to make the first entry in the third row to 0, which means that we subtract the first row from the third row. Then, the leading entry in the second row is 1, so we make the entry below it to 0. So we add 2 times the second row to the third row. Now, the leading entry in the third row is 5, so we multiply the third row by 1 over 5. We obtain the following augmented matrix, and A is already in row echelon form. We continue the row operations, to form the identity matrix on the left. To make the entry above the leading one in the second row to zero, we subtract two times the second row from the first row. Lastly, to make the entries above the leading one in the third row to zero, we add three times the third row to the first row, and subtract the third row from the second row. Now, we have the identity matrix on the left, which means that the matrix on the right, in other words, 2 over 5, negative 4 over 5, 3 over 5, 1 over 5, 3 over 5, negative 1 over 5, negative 1 over 5, 2 over 5, and 1 over 5, is the inverse of A.